absolutely encourage them to like try new things and, and get out there and do something different. Each camp has their own local flavor, if you will, um, but all of us have sort of that traditional camp experience where there's activities like fishing, boating, crafts, you know, making jewelry, and then our campers come Sunday and stay through Friday. There's a lot to do. It's a there, lot of fun. It's like, so are they surprised by the experience? I would say yes. Um, and, and most families, you know, they're not really, sh I mean, especially depending on where they're at in their journey and their kids' treatment, some of them aren't really sure about, you know, a week of summer camp, um, especially when they do realize that, hey, you know, like the point is that these kids don't feel like they're in clinic or in the hospital and they get to just be kids again. But they also, they have peace of mind knowing that our volunteers are trained and you know they're ready for this experience and we've got a medical team that is ready to handle any sort of emergencies or even just little regular boo-boos and homesickness and that sort of stuff. I think it comes as a welcome surprise for sure um, because they're like, oh wow, they get to just do all of this regular stuff that kids do. In my imagination, a kid is, is feeling all sorts of things because of this experience they're having with cancer and their families as well. And then they come have this like traditional experience where you say they can just be kids. How do they transform over that five to six days? Uh, it's pretty incredible. I mean, cause you'll see little things like, um, you know, kids that maybe they don't have their hair from chemo or radiation. And so they're wearing hats to start off with and they're not necessarily super comfortable in their own skin. And then they look around and see that, you know, this is a place where kids know what this experience is like. We don't want to be super soft and we don't want to ignore the elephant in the room and these kids have been through tremendous stuff and also I think because we make it intentional like that and because we're trying to give them that hope and inspiration and lift them up that we see kids grow. Um, I'm just going to tell a story because it's like hands down my favorite camp story ever. Joseph who he's a 15 year old boy um, and so he comes to camp and He's got some significant side effects from his chemo and treatment and he has like a sweating disorder so he's always got to have a cooling fan, he walks with a cane and he's got like this old soul dry sense of humor kind of thing so he's a bit socially awkward for most other teenagers anyway. Um, but I mean, you see him then in the pool, like wearing a coconut bra and just coming out of his shell. Um, but my favorite thing is um, during the talent show, we have kind of a stage. And so he's standing up on the stage and he actually is doing an act. He sings um, the uh, Smash Mouth's All-Star song. So we have technical difficulties at camp too. So normally we have the background music playing, which we did. And he's on stage and he starts and he's maybe 20 seconds into this song and we lose the background. And we were like, ooh, ooh, you know, this could go lots of different ways. And what happened was just absolutely epic. He throws his cane to the side, he like grabs the mic even tighter, and then he starts from the beginning, a cappella, goes all the way through. So we're all like crazy and cheering. And it doesn't end there because he stretches his arm out and does this epic mic drop at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, what? what? Yeah. I mean it, he could have been embarrassed, he could have gotten upset, he could have ran off stage, like so many yes. things could have happened and none of them would have been wrong. But what did happen is like the magic of camp. 